Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is the first video in the new year, so happy new year. I wish everyone a happy, successful, and healthy 2021. In today's video, we'll be going over some of the Q&A, some of the questions that you left in the comment section on my previous videos in relation to climbing the corporate ladder from accountant to corporate controller. So I'm gonna be going over these questions. I picked seven questions, and these are the best questions that I've seen in terms of education, experience, and how to get there, how to get from an accountant to a corporate controller. So I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna be going over the seven questions and their answers. I'm gonna be saving the uh, best questions for last so that you watch the, the full video. Why? Because when you watch the full video, then the uh, YouTube algorithm will distribute the video to more people, it will reach more people as a result of that. So without further ado, let's dive right in. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna, I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York, and I have over 15 years of experience in finance where I started out at PricewaterhouseCoopers as an auditor, and then I transitioned out to private industry and worked my way up from accountant to corporate controller. And this channel is all about giving you the summary of my experience over the last decade and a half in terms of interviewing tips, uh, in terms of uh, career advice and how to grow your career and climb the corporate ladder from accountant to corporate controller. And I do this here on my YouTube channel as well as my own website uh, via blog posts and my online course and templates. So go ahead and check that out as well. All right, so diving into your questions on becoming a corporate controller, the first question comes from Evans Juma, and the question goes, hi Bill, could you please expand more on the role of a corporate controller on internal controls, financial modeling, and business forecasting? And honestly, I could do a video on each of these topics uh, by itself, but in today's video, I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of each of these aspects. So the first one, internal controls, the corporate controller is concerned with two sides of the business usually. Uh, the cash that's coming in, so that's billing or revenue, and the cash that's going out. Uh, so the controller usually would build an internal control framework around these two aspects of the business. So in terms of billing, uh, the corporate controller is trying to make sure the billing is correct. The invoices that are going out, and therefore the revenue that's being recorded on the books is correct. And usually the way to do this is a control such as having someone prepare the invoices and someone else review these invoices for accuracy, right? So you have there a layer of review. And then the other control that you can do here is sort of a month over month uh, analysis by customer to catch any mistakes or anomalies. So this is as far as the revenue booked or the, the billing, uh, the way to make money. This is important, right? This is how the company makes money. The second aspect of internal controls is gonna be also the cash that's going out or disbursement, right? And the two overarching themes in terms of internal controls for cash disbursement um, is gonna be around uh, budgeting, so creating an annual operating budget for the company, and then whenever you're spending, um, you're looking at the budget, right? So you're creating a budget by spending bucket, or if you know by vendor, if you have that information, you can create the budget by vendor. So whenever someone is making a purchase request or a PO, uh, then you are comparing that spend and controlling. This is how you control spend, right? You're then making sure that that spend is budgeted for as part of the budget. Um, and then the second aspect of cash disbursement is gonna be segregation of duties, right? And this is important. If you studied accounting or auditing, you know that segregation of duties is a huge aspect uh, of cash disbursement or treasury function at a company. So with segregation of duties, you always wanna make sure that uh, no one person controls all aspects of the cash disbursement process. So ideally, the person who creates an, a vendor in a system is different from the person um, who is actually entering an invoice, a vendor invoice in the system. So you don't have the same person creating a fictitious vendor and then entering an invoice that's made up against that vendor. So you wanna segregate that function. And also, you wanna have the person who's approving the disbursement in the bank or the wire itself or whatever uh, method of approving the payment you have whether it's just check signing or approving in a bank, you wanna have that to be someone else entirely uh, from the first two people. Um, this is obviously not achievable in every company, as smaller companies won't have that level of sophistication, but whenever a company grows enough and have enough staff on hand, this is the best practice is to have, is to segregate uh, the functions between entering an invoice, creating a vendor in the first place, and approving that payment. So this is in terms of internal controls. And if you have a job interview coming up in accounting, be sure to check out the template I have on my website for the night before the accounting interview, which summarizes all of the questions that you should know 
for the interview and prepare the night before the interview. Uh, so check that out. It applies to all level of accounting. Check it out. I'm going to leave a link in the description below. With financial modeling, the meaning of modeling here is that you're comparing a couple of different scenarios to see which outcome is more advantageous. Right. Uh, so one of the examples of financial modeling as a controller is when I worked for a baby food manufacturer, whenever we created a new product, when we came up with a new product idea, we would model uh, the P&L or the cost, uh, the profit and loss for that product. So we come up with a product and then we uh, create like maybe three different scenarios. The first one is if we source uh, the material from vendor A at a cost X, what would be the profit in that case? And then scenario, the second scenario will be if you source it from vendor B at a cost Y, what would be the profit uh, at a different hypothetical, a different scenario. So this is the meaning of financial modeling is that you're creating different um, scenarios and picking the best or the most advantageous one. So financial modeling comes in different ways for a controller. And then uh, business forecasting, obviously there's a big component of forecasting for a controller. The biggest one has to do with cash flow management. So you're always making sure you have enough cash on hand, especially for a startup company, uh, making, in, uh, making sure you have enough cash on hand to meet the uh, current obligations and then the long-term obligations uh, for the company. So cash management has a lot of forecasting uh, to it as well as the budget. So whenever you're managing to a budget, you're always creating a forecast on top of the budget. So you have a budget for the year, you create a budget, and then you also create a forecast for the next 12 months so that you're always keeping a handle on the budget, which is has set up from prior year. And then also now with the new knowledge, what is the forecast? What is the business going to do in the next 12 months? So that you're always keeping a handle whether you're going to underperform or overperform. Obviously, uh, as they say, um, sales cure all problems. So obviously, if you're doing better than budget, then that's great. Um, but if not, then you know that you might have some issues with cash. So this is, uh, as far as forecasting, this is the answer to the first question. All right, diving into your second question. The question comes from Heisenberg. I love that name. I love Breaking Bad. Uh, thank you for your video. Would you say that as a corporate controller, you have a lot of flexibility to switch to new or different industries, even if the most of your work experience was in one particular industry? Say, for example, real estate tech, entertainment, media, blah, blah, blah. And I love this question. I get this question many, many times. Uh, basically, if you look at my resume of my own work history, I worked in three different industries, manufacturing, services, and currently tech. And I enjoy the, the most out of all these uh, tech, which is the current uh, industry or software. That's what I enjoy the most. Uh, but basically, I found it pretty easy to transition from one industry to another. So the answer to the question, the short answer is that I found it pretty easy to transition from one industry to the next. That's not a problem. However, I'll say from just watching my colleagues who work in controllership and specialize in one industry, they make themselves more valuable. Right. So the more you specialize in one industry, the more you know the ins and outs and all the nuances in one industry, say manufacturing, you become a more valuable controller in manufacturing. Right. Uh, however, I do enjoy the flexibility and I do. I tend to get bored with one industry for working over, let's say, five years. Uh, so I have this cycle of kind of changing the industry every few years. Um, currently, I'm very content with working software or tech. Uh, that's a happy place for me. So I'm staying for a while. Um, but basically, I found it pretty easy to transition from one industry to the other. That's the answer to the second question. All right, going to your third question, and it comes from C. Quinter. The question goes, hello, I have six years as an AR and credit collection manager. What do you think should be my next move to become a controller ultimately? Should I become an AP manager now? Thank you. So basically, this question, uh, I think, is based on the advice that to become a corporate controller, you need to be, and this is a good advice. So to become a corporate controller, you need to be good at uh, billing and revenue, which is what this uh, watcher has, has been doing, is AR and credit collection manager. And then also the disbursement side, which is the accounts payable side, um, plus also some cash management experience. So this is the rounded experience that, that can get you to a corporate controller, AR, AP, cash management. Uh, so here the question is, if, if they spend six years in AR, is the best move then next to go to an AP manager role? And my answer to that is that that would be best only if your target company to work for is a large corporation. Then yes, go and work as an AP manager because uh, large corporations have a very specialized, a very specific procurement process for accounts payable that involves purchase requisitions, purchase orders, and a workflow that you need to be good at, right? But if your target companies are medium, uh, small or medium sized companies, I'd much rather see you uh, not get too specialized in accounts payable in the next role 
and I'd much rather see you go work as an accounting manager. Why? Because when you go to work as an accounting manager, um, you'll get the exposure to accounts payable, but also you get exposure to uh, financial reporting and cash management and internal controls and a variety of aspects of running an accounting, uh, an accounting team. So um, then I'd much rather see you go in the next move to work as an accounting manager that has more responsibilities than just accounts payable. That's your third question. All right, next question comes from Ahmed Kop and Ahmed asks, Hi, I'm an accountant for 12 years and I'm still same in my role without any change. I'm suffering and I need to change my role to finance. So he wants to go from, looks like from an accounting to, uh, to finance. Is there an opportunity to do that? And uh, what is the first tip to do that? Thank you. Uh, so basically this is a video I've done in the past. I've done a video on going from accounting to finance. I'm gonna leave a link up, a link up to this video up here. So basically uh, going from accounting to finance is doable. I've seen a lot of people do it. Um, and my, in my, my view, the best way to do it is to transition to finance within your current company right now. So don't make a move into a finance role. I want you in your current role to try to get some more uh, exposure to finance. So ask to work on a budget, to get involved in the budget, the forecasting um, of the operation of the company, uh, get involved more in designing of uh, compensation plans. This is, all, this is all strategic finance stuff, right? Uh, so budgeting, forecasting, design of compensation plans, especially for salespeople, uh, right? And on the aspects that has to do with finance, ask your manager now in your current role to be involved in these things. So it's a little bit difficult because you'll be doing your, your work as an accountant and also doing some uh, extra, extra work in, in finance. So it's more difficult, uh, but this is the safest way to do it, right? So that you can get some exposure. And then once you feel comfortable in a couple of years, you can then look for a role outside of your company or maybe within your company um, to work in finance, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is my advice is to try to make the transition slowly within your current role. Don't, love, don't just leave uh, cold turkey and jump into a finance role without getting uh, your feet wet into working, getting some experience within your company and learning um, strategic finance. So this is the question number four. The next question on my list comes from Dia and her question goes, can I become a corporate controller with CMA US certification? CMA stands for a Certified Management Accountant and this is as opposed, I imagine, to CPA, which is Certified Public Accountant, which is the certification that I have. Um, so I have experience with CPA, but I've also seen many, many controllers uh, just have CMA, or Certified Management Accountant uh, license. So I think it's doable, yes, the answer is yes, you can become a controller with CMA license. Uh, I'll, I'll say that there are more controllers with a CPA license than there are with CMA license, right? There are those who have both of them. If you have both of them, you basically, you can write your own ticket, you are, you're golden, right? Uh, but obviously, from my experience, the ones that have CPA are more than the ones that have CMA. Um, and also, if you want to work in public, uh, public companies, so the company is publicly traded, chances are you want to become a CPA for that, not a CMA, right? CPAs will have much more handle on uh, running the accounting team or the financial reporting for a publicly traded company. So usually that will be a CPA. But yes, you can become a controller with a CMA uh, US certification. That's the question number five on my list. All right, question number six comes from H. Lewis, and his question is, any tips on how to commence CA or CPA with little accounting experience? I greatly appreciate it. And CA and CPA, obviously CA stands for Chartered Accountants, and that's the sort of the global equivalent or outside of the U.S. equivalent to CPA. CPA is Certified Public Accountant, right? So Chartered Accountant, accountant or uh, Certified Public Accountant with little accounting experience. And my answer to that is that you don't really need the accounting experience to sit for these exams, right? So you can begin the process. So make sure you knock out uh, the education requirement. Make sure you have the education requirement to sit for these exams. And then secondarily is this is about studying the material for the exam and taking a review course and having the stamina to study and sit for the exam. This is a very difficult exam. Um, I speak from experience for the CPA exam itself where I failed multiple times before I was able to pass. So it's a very difficult exam. You need to study for it. Um, it's more about studying the material than actually having real life experience. Honestly, real life experience is sort of irrelevant when it comes to the CPA exam. Uh, it's more about the academics. It's more about the studying, having a regimented study program and taking a really solid review course. So taking a CPA review course is really a cornerstone to passing the exam. I've taken two, I've taken Becker, I uh, didn't like it that much. And then I've taken Roger CPA review and that's the one I recommend. Uh, it's an awesome review course. I'll leave a link down in the description below to, for you to get a discount on that. 
but basically yes it's about um, taking studying the material uh, getting the education requirement and then the accounting experience is only going to matter later when you are ready to apply for the actual certificate with the governing body so whenever you go into the state and applying for the actual license uh, that's when you need to show them because there is always an experience requirement that's when you always need to show them that you have I think it's one or two years working under a CPA supervision so don't worry too much if you want to commence the process if you want to begin the process don't worry too much about the accounting experience make sure you study take a rev CPA review course and sit for the exam as early as possible that's uh, question number six on my list all right the last question and the best question so I left this question till the end and I told you that this is gonna be the best question I left it till the end of the video the question comes from Matt and he asks Currently, uh, I work at a big four and I was wondering, should you go to a larger company after big four and then make a move to a startup later in your career? So basically, uh, this is the, the struggle that I've always had in my career, right? Do you want to go work for a startup first or a large company first? And in my own experience, after PwC, I went to work for a startup company and then from a startup company and then went to a large global conglomerate, right? Uh, and in hindsight, that's not the right move. So I started out at a startup and then I went to a big company. The right move in my view should have been to start at a larger company first and then go to a startup after that. The reason being is that when you work at a large company, you get exposed to the actual correct framework of things from a public traded, especially if it's a public traded company, uh, you get exposed to the right, uh, you know, internal controls, uh, process, SOX 404, um, you know, really how an accounting uh, department should be run right so you get exposure to that and then when you take that to a startup after that and bring that experience bring that maturity uh, into a startup you are so much more valuable right um, rather than going to a startup first you're really struggling to figure out your your way through things you're really fig reading online figuring out things on your own if you go to a large company you will get that experience concentrated experience on how an accounting team is run and then apply it to a startup so i much rather see someone go from a big four or any other uh, public accounting firm go work for a large company first uh, it doesn't have to be a huge company it could be like maybe medium to large right and then go from there to a startup later on in their career i'm a huge advocate for working for startups because working for a startup uh, is going to give you a big um, chunk of the equity at the beginning of the business where you don't get that when you work for a mature large corporation uh, so startups are really good for that as well as really getting your hands right into work and becoming uh, someone who can create an accounting function from scratch uh, right so this is my advice here go work for a large company get the right experience and then apply it to a startup uh, company after that. That's the last question on my list. If you have any questions at all related to accounting or finance, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button. And I'll see you in the next video.